Okay, second tier example on the binomial. I'm still using this expansion. I've still got a 1 here, so that's the important thing. This bracket has got to start with 1. I'm not too bothered this isn't an x. So minus 3x is just acting like that plus x there. Okay, so now I really am going to have to use brackets, but otherwise it's just going to be a direct application of the formula. So I've got 1, I've got minus 3x acting like my x, and my n is 3 over 2. So this 3 over 2 tells me that the n is 3 over 2, but now the x is not just an x, it's a minus 3x. So uh, in the expansion I get the first term is going to be 1, the second term is nx, but I've now got different things, so n and x. I'm going to have bracket times bracket. Okay, what's my bracket? My bracket is n, which is my power, which is 3 over 2. And my x is, what have I got instead of this x? And so I've got minus 3x. That's why the brackets are so important. I've got minus 3x. And then when I get on to the next term, this x squared term is going to be after the fraction, I'm going to have bracket squared, not just x squared. OK, and this is going to be minus 3x in the bracket. What do I have on the top of the fraction? Well, it's n times n minus 1. So that's bracket times bracket. OK, what's my n? It's 3 over 2. n minus 1 is 3 over 2 times that take away 1. 3 over 2 take away 1 is a half. Divided by, on the bottom, I've got 1 times 2. Remember, that dot is a times. OK, and then for the next term, all right, now I've got to extend the pattern. That's formula doesn't tell me the next term, but I've got the pattern now. So on the top of my fraction, I start with 3 over 2. I take away 1 to get a half. That's what I had before. But now I've got a third bracket. I take away 1 again from a half, which gives me minus a half. And on the bottom, I've got 1 times 2. I take that one step further, 1 times 2 times 3. And then afterwards, instead of having bracket squared, I've got bracket cubed. So I've got minus 3x bracket cubed. Now, the previous example was simple enough we could simplify in one step, but more generally it probably pays to simplify in two steps, okay, because there are two things to sort out. There's this kind of fractiony bit, okay, and then there's the square, squared or cubed bit. So that doesn't apply to the first term, that's just 1, and it doesn't really apply to the second term. I can see that I've got 3 over 2 times minus 3. You can resort to your calculator if you have to. So this is minus 9 over 2. 3 times, uh, sorry, 3 over 2 times minus 3 is minus 9 and over 2, and there's an x in there as well. And then the next bit. Now this, I think, needs to be done in two stages. You can use your calculator if you wish. 3 over 2 times 1 over 2 divided by 2 is 3 eighths. Check me on 3 eighths times minus 3x squared. The brackets are really important. A minus inside the bracket squared becomes a plus. And 3x squared is 9x squared, not 3x squared. So the minus and the 3 are getting squared. That's why the brackets are really important. And then the next term is 3 over 2 times a half times minus a half. Well, that's minus 1 eighth divided, sorry, minus 3 eighths, divided by 6, well, 3s are going to cancel, that's going to be minus 1 sixteenth. So minus 1 sixteenth times, okay, and then minus 3x cubed, well, a minus 3 cubed is minus 27, and of course I get x cubed, okay? So there's a bit too much going on uh, there for you to want to simplify this term and this term straight away. So I'm going to get 1 minus 9 over 2 times x. 3 times 9 is 27, so this is plus 27 eighths x squared. And minus times a minus is a plus 27 sixteenths x cubed. This should have plus dot 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 at the end, because remember this is an infinite uh, series. In fact, it may not even converge. So in part one, I've now finished. That's my simplified expansion. But for what values of x is the expansion valid? Okay, back to the formula. So this is given in the formula book. As well as the formula, it gives you the rule for validity. So modulus of x is less than 1. Aha, but that assumes we've got an x here. What I've been using instead of x is minus 3x. So it is valid for modulus of minus 3x is less than 1. So I changed my x to what I've been using instead of x. Um, now, um, modulus are acting on a minus will just make it plus anyway. So the minus I can ignore, but I need to find the modulus of x because I want to know the range of validity for x. So I have to divide by 3. So it's less than 
one third. Not minus a third, because modulus can't be negative anyway. The minus is zapped by the modulus, but then I divide by the three. So that's my validity there.